Can you believe there was a time for Daredevil without the Kingpin or Elektra? Well, find out how it all began as I do a retro view of the Daredevil by Frank Miller Omnibus and the Companion. So, let's get started. And welcome back everybody. Now, this is a segment that I brought back because of popular demand and it's the retro view segment. So the very first thing I need to get out there for anybody that's new to the channel is that I'm not announcing any reprints or I'm not looking at an advanced copy of the Daredevil by Frank Miller Omnibus. These are just my copies. As a matter of fact, these are my first printings. Uh, but this is where people want me to go back and look at these older books in the hopes that one day they'll be reprinted. That's what this segment is. So that's why it's the retro view. So yes, on the left-hand side, we have the Daredevil by Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen, properly credited, by the way, uh, Omnibus. And then the Daredevil by Frank Miller Omnibus. This is the Companion and really serves as a volume two, but I'm glad they called it a companion. And keep in mind, these are my first printings. The second printing and third printing of these books had a dust jacket, a complete dust jacket. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute, uh, because these were one of a kind dust jackets that they did uh, for the very first printing. But let's look at the spines first, which I'm sure you're probably noticing right away. Wait a minute, that's, different yeah that's right they had the marvel omnibus down here instead of the usual up here they just have daredevil by frank miller and klaus jansen here and daredevil by david mazzucchelli john ramita jr and bill sinkevich over here and then the backs of the books now when it originally came out this one was 99 dollars 99 and this one i believe was 59 dollars yeah 59 dollars 99 but when it was reprinted i think that one was 100 and this one was 125 dollars Again, these are first printing, so when they originally came out, and these books have been through a lot with me. They have traveled with me. As a matter of fact, on my honeymoon when we went to Japan, Japan. in 2008, they were with me. I Yeah, I'm crazy. I take Omnis with me when I traveled for work or when it was my honeymoon. But this is what's interesting about these first printings is these mini little dust jackets that I usually see in manga, honestly. I like them. Uh, I'm sure it was a thing that Marvel didn't want to redo again because, you know, they like to keep a standard format and stick to it. And I really like the contrast here. I love the fact that this one is red and then this one is black. Meanwhile, the book is red and the companion is black. And I love that look. Now, when it was reprinted, like I mentioned, these are completely full dust jackets. I think it's just a full image when you remove the dust jackets. I don't know, I don't have the uh, second printing. Spines, again, Marvel Omnibus down there. And then the back of the book with these beautiful images by Frank Miller. And of course, this one here from Born Again. Let's dive into the very first volume and then look at the companion. Where it all began, Daredevil by Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen. And I know that kind of sounds blasphemous, honestly, when I say where it all began, considering it was Stan Lee uh, that created the character, but really who redefined the character and made him who he is. Made him not just Spider-Man or a Batman ripoff, as some people were calling him, was Frank Miller. And there's an introduction here from Frank Miller uh, in the year 2000. And this is where it all kicks off with issue 158 of Daredevil. Now, during this time, Frank Miller was not the writer on the book. He was just the penciler. And this is when he lets his pencils in with issue 158. It was Roger McKenzie that was writing the book and the book wasn't selling well. So let's talk about the contents of the book and then we'll talk about the stories here. Uh, but this collects Daredevil 158, as you see here, uh, all the way to 161 and then 163 to 191 and then what if number 28. Now, if you're wondering why issue 162 is not collected in here, it's because that was the fill-in issue by Steve Ditko. Uh, that one is collected in the Marvel Masterworks. If you want to go back and look at um, the video, I think from a couple months ago, that I showcased that uh, Marvel Masterwork. But since it wasn't Frank Miller, it was not collected in this particular collection. I think if they were to redo this again, if they were to remap it, they would probably collect it. But back then, this was just a creator-centric book. So, yeah. We have Roger McKenzie writing the stories, and then we have Frank Miller drawing them, who's younger at the time. 
However, he was really not that happy with the script and kind of wanted to take the character over and start writing. In issue 168, editorial was like, sure, you know what? The book is probably going to get canceled. So why don't you go ahead and take over the book? But let me show you this awesome fight scene here in the roller coaster with his arch nemesis, Bullseye. Just to show you the layouts and the dynamic sequences that Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen are able to do. As of issue 168, let's get to that. This issue right here, 168, Frank Miller becomes the ongoing writer and penciler on the book while Klaus Janssen is supplying the inks. And issue 168 also serves as an introduction of this young lady right here, Elektra. Electra Nachios, who will play a big crucial part in Daredevil's life. Now, you can break down Frank Miller's original 1981 to 1983 run on Daredevil into two narratives. Pretty much, it's the story of Electra, the love story, the tragic love story, and also the rise of the Kingpin. So, before Frank Miller, the Kingpin was just kind of a retired Spider Man villain. And he kind of gave up that life. So Frank Miller wanted to use a character that was already established that he could use as an organized crime kind of character. So he used the Kingpin. And editors at Marvel were like, sure, nobody's using that character anyway. Why would you want to use that character? I believe they described him as the Jackie Gleason of villains. But that's what the two main narratives are during this particular point in Frank Miller's career of Daredevil. So we have, of course, his biggest arch nemesis, Bullseye, come in. And one thing that he does, that Frank Miller does, is also set up a backstory for Daredevil, for Matt Murdock, that he had met Elektra in the past during his college years, falling madly in love, and sadly, because of the death of her father, she was taken away and led into a horrible life as an assassin so she shows back up in his adult life when he's donning the costume of daredevil as an assassin for hire as a matter of fact it's the kingpin that ends up hiring her during the gang war so that's what all of this sets up it's this huge gang war that's about to happen when we are reintroduced to the kingpin in the pages of daredevil 170 with the story of the kingpin must die which has one of the most iconic fights this and probably issue 181 to me in Daredevil where it's the fight between Daredevil and Bullseye and it's just so freaking awesome and his use of whites where he kind of forces you to follow the action sequences oh I love it of course he was heavily inspired by manga I mean he himself Miller himself has stated that he was a big fan of Lone Wolf and Cub so that's why you see a lot of action sequences during his Daredevil run without any real dialogue. Whereas if, in the pages of Spider-Man, you see Spider-Man just kind of being a smartass and, you know, while he's fighting. But most of the time during the fight sequences, it's a pretty silent battle. This is what I'm talking about. This fall right here. Oh, it's so phenomenal. So easy to follow. And then, of course... The big fight with the Kingpin in this particular issue right here. Now, I got to keep moving. Otherwise, I could talk about each single issue. But I do need to state a couple of other things. Um, that Frank Miller was also responsible for retconning a lot of Matt Murdock and his connection to his origin. So before Matt Murdock was a guy that got hit by radioactive goo and went blind. But he was given... All these ultra senses however what Frank Miller states during his run is that he was able to tap into those senses not because of the radioactive goo that hit him during his youth but because he had proper training from this guy named stick this is what I mean by action sequences so freaking awesome so stick became his mentor stick was a character that Frank Miller created that Again, a retcon shoehorning him into Matt Murdock's past, saying that he had trained him for this upcoming war. The Hand gets involved. These are a group of ninja assassins that don't really have a character. They're just kind of faceless assassins, but they come in waves and just kick all kinds of ass. And of course, all of this is really setting up Daredevil to have this fantastical feel to his story. So 
that's what yeah, this is what the hand looks like. I'm sure you've seen the hand if you've been reading Wolverine or if you collect any of the toys. There's Gladiator jumping in. Oh, this this phenomenal run. Now later on, Frank Miller does get busy writing the story, so he doesn't have enough time to do all of the pencils. So he just pretty much does the breakdowns. And then eventually, I think he moves on to rough breakdowns of just like some thumbnail sketches, but Klaus Jansen becomes his finisher. And there's Stick training Matt and retraining him for the war that is to come. It's flashback to Matt and his dad. And of course, when I said tragic love story of Matt and Elektra, I'll let you find out what all that means. Uh, by reading the book. I'm sure if you've read Marvel Comics, you know who the character of Elektra is. But just in case for the people that have not read it before, I don't want to spoil that for anybody. You see the rest of his supporting cast in here. And there's also some appearances by Luke Cage and Danny Rand right there. Who end up helping him becoming the street-level defenders in the Netflix show. But they do make appearances here. And it all leads to this double size special issue, number 181. This freaking issue. I wish I could uh, break down and show you the fighting sequences in here. Because they are awesome. Some of the best. But let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Because we have the other book to talk about. Because I forgot we're doing two books. Damn it. I got stuck talking about this one. Uh, this one has 840 pages. Let's look at the extras in the back. It ends with the What If Daredevil Became an Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. story. This one is by Frank Miller and drawn by Frank Miller and inks by Klaus Janssen. And then, yes, we have some thumbnail sketches of some of the artwork that you'll be finding in here. That's such a brutal, badass scene. It's Kingpin reestablishing himself. And then, of course, i got to skip some pages because of spoilers, but here is some artwork to the official handbook of the Marvel Universe that were drawn by Frank Miller. Back cover to the Marvel Fanfare, and then the trade paperback covers that uh, Frank Miller did, along with Klaus Janssen. And these are from the Visionaries. These are drawn by Frank Miller. always loved that picture. That one's solid, too, but that one's awesome. Now, the companion. This one here is a little bit slimmer uh, because it only has 604 pages, but this serves as a way to collect the rest of the Frank Miller issues fe featuring uh, Daredevil, whether it was in the pages of Daredevil or the pages of Spectacular Spider-Man. There is an introduction here by Ralph Macchio, and here is his appearance in Spectacular Spider-Man. Bill Mantlo writing the story but Frank Miller providing the artwork. So this collects Spectacular Spider-Man 27 and 28, Daredevil 219, 226 to 233, and the Daredevil Man Without Fear 1 through 5. I can't wait to talk about that. And Marvel Graphic Novel number 24, which is the Daredevil Love and War. So it shows uh, his artwork here when it was featured in Spectacular Spider-Man and also features the character of Daredevil. Shows his return here to the character of Daredevil with this uh, issue here of Badlands. This one here, I think John Romita? Oh no, Big John Buscema supplies the artwork for this one. And then of course, and then of course, his triumphant return to the title with probably what is known as the greatest Daredevil story, Born Again. Kicking it off with issue 226. Uh, the artwork, however, this time around is done by David Mazzucchelli. And this is where he comes back to the character of Matt Murdock and shows another huge fight, what is supposed to be probably the final fight with the Kingpin, but is anything really resolved with the Kingpin uh, between Matt and the Kingpin? So there's a lot of closure in this, returning characters that come back through these pages, and it is just a breakdown of the character of Matt. How much one man can take before he snaps. And it's a study on the whole human psyche of a broken man and what he's willing to do. And who the most dangerous man is. And it has one of my favorite quotes from the Kingpin. Because a man without hope is a man without fear. Damn. This story is so freaking epic and rightly so. How just much Matt Murdock can take 
and still be one of the most dangerous men alive. And of course, this battle with the Kingpin. Now, one thing you may have noticed um, as I'm flipping through these pages here is how <laughs> the book tries to close himself. And I have read these books a lot. Um, this is usually due to the binding of the first few printings. The paper quality is really thick, glossy paper. And while people do love that, it does weigh the book down. And this is sadly one of the side effects is that the book tries to close in on you. Not very bad at all. But like I said, I have properly opened these books when I first got them years ago. And these books have had a proper read through and still have issues staying open from time to time. Uh, this is the Love and War graphic novel, beautifully drawn by Bill Sienkiewicz. And then this right here. Now, remember when I said that Born Again is probably regarded as the best Daredevil comic story? To me, The Man Without Fear is my favorite Daredevil story. So this was a five-issue miniseries that spun out of a movie script that Frank Miller wrote. So he wrote a script to make a, they were gonna make a Daredevil movie and sadly it fell through. So instead of just scrapping that script, he decided to make it into a five issue miniseries. This time the artwork is supplied by John Romita Jr. And I know there's a division with John Romita Jr. There's people that hate his art, there's people that love his art. I don't think anybody draws a better kingpin. To me, I think he draws the perfect kingpin. I think this, along with the beginning of JMS's Spider-Man, is my favorite things that he has ever drawn. And this is coming from a Roger Stern Spider-Man fan that loves the Juggernaut story, that loves all those classic Roger Stern stories with John Romita Jr. on artwork. But to me, this is, and of course, JMS Spidey, uh, is the best thing that he had worked on. So what this does is retell the origin of Daredevil while also shoehorning in the things that Frank Miller created, such as the character of Stick. So now you see the beginning of Daredevil in chronological order, how Matt Murdock got blinded by that accident, and whether it was on purpose or not. And then, of course, his college years, where he gets to meet the beautiful and deadly Electra Nachios long before she was an assassin for hire, and how he began his training. So he kind of, in a way, works as like Batman Year One, which also written by Frank Miller. But let me just show you some of the panels here love it it's so easy to follow again borrowing heavily from frank miller's run on daredevil matt senses this girl he smells her. oh this is so great and i just wanted to show how he draws electra so deadly so sexy oh man look at that and of course the kingpin to me like i said draws the best kingpin it's not this obese guy but he's this just massive force that looks like could snap your neck from across the room and for some reason even though he is built like he's supposed to be slow he's a lot faster than he leads on so i i, I don't know it's just this impending massive force that john romita jr is able to capture for the character of kingpin and yes my favorite series you can find out how it all ends by yourself by picking up this book this one is still in stock by the way as of this video here's some layout sequences from born again the phenomenal fight with the kingpin let's skip some of that to the script i think they even added yes this right here the movie script or the pitch maybe they added some of that in there the blind justice graphic novel this was the original pitch for the graphic novel that ended up becoming Love and War. And then some pinups from Born Again. Oh, I'm sorry, not Born Again, but The Man Without Fear. Uh, cover sketches, unused covers. And then the prologue here by Miller and John Romita Jr. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you've read the Daredevil Born Again, what you thought of it. Then all the way in the back, there are there's an article here from Marvel Age 127 talking about the man without fear. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. When the book comes back into print, 
or if you want to buy the companion for now, check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for you minties. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for US customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and page count of these Omnis. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the Frank Miller run on Daredevil, if you've read it before, if you own it in any format, if you have the Omnibus Edition, if you have the box set, the trade paperbacks, the single issues, whatever format you have it in, I'd love to know that. And of course, if you want this to be reprinted, leave those comments down below. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And remember, everyone, please stay healthy, stay safe, and much love. <music>